Hey guys, Johnny B here again today, and we are gonna be bringing you episode four on the Project IS 300 600 horsepower build. And uh, in this episode, since we already took the engine out last episode, we are gonna be addressing a lot of the stuff here that's just dirty and clean, or not even clean, that needs to be cleaned. And then we have some acid over here that fell down from the battery that kind of like corroded a little bit of surface rust. So we're gonna fix that. Luckily in AZ, we don't have rust issues. Uh, the whole subframe is all oily from the engine leaking. A lot of like this area back here in the tunnels got dirt from the tires. Uh, we know when you were going off-road or if it was like a dirty day. All the suspension components are a bit dirty as well. Obviously this car has been around for quite a bit of years. So this has probably never been cleaned in its whole life. So we're gonna be doing that and uh, pretty much prepping the car so that we can get the engine bay painted, make it look clean, delete all the stuff, and just have you know a really clean engine bay. We're gonna go ahead and put all of the suspension back in because what we did after we took out the engine we took apart everything as you can see the wiring harness is just dangling here and we went ahead and cleaned it all up there is not a speck of dust you can literally rub your hand on any part of the body and your hand will be clean so we went through all of this front area from the firewall forward cleaned it all up uh, we even painted the inner fender walls i guess you can say and uh, we went ahead, ordered some bushings because all of the bushings on the IS300 were pretty much shot. They were all dry rotted at this point. And so if we're gonna be doing this build right, we wanna make sure we refresh the whole car. It'll be kind of like a, like a restoration. So we went ahead and ordered some aftermarket uh, bushings, which were, by the way, the most difficult things to find on the internet. I don't know why, but we found them all the way in Siberia, Russia. So we got some Russian bushings. We pressed all that stuff in, you know, we redid the whole suspension, repainted everything, made sure that everything was looking nice and fresh. And uh, in this video, we're gonna go ahead and install it all. So let's, let's do it. So here goes the wheel well. As you can see, we went ahead and cleaned it all up. We went ahead and painted it. It's a flat black from Rust-Oleum that helps protect, you know, against corrosion. It keeps every, all the paint protected. Uh, normally under here, it's kind of white. It's got some black in it and it wasn't really finished up. So we thought we'd go ahead, mask it all off paint it up, make sure that it's nice and clean. So here we have all of the suspension arms. We have the uprights, the knuckles, we have the hub. We put some brand new bearings in there, brand new hubs, because they were all rusty. Here you can see the lower control arms. These, these are the Siberia bushings that we put. They're kind of like a yellow. It's gonna actually help with performance and they, these will probably last longer than the car will because these things are so solid. We have the upper control arms which we will be replacing, but for the, for the sake of the video, we went ahead and you know, freshened them up. We are looking to get you know, some upgraded ones, but they're all out of stock, literally three months ahead. We have to wait for that. So we're gonna put the suspension together with those on for now. Uh, that's the only reason why we haven't replaced the bushings on those. Obviously everything got painted, make sure that nothing was rusted, make sure we went ahead and grinded everything down, sanded it all down, went ahead and painted it. And obviously brand new bearings inside of the hubs they're gonna make the world of difference because when we were turning the, the ones that were in there, they were not sounding good at all. And then another thing that we went ahead and did is we messed with the suspension a little bit. We're gonna do the front uh, suspension here. These are, this car already had Bailstein uh, shocks in front or struts. And all we did was go ahead and freshen them up and we got a set of uh, Eibach Pro kit springs because it's gonna be more of a daily car. So we're not gonna go with coilovers. We wanted something that was gonna be more simple. It was gonna be a nice ride, something that's gonna be smooth. So that's why we ended up going with that. 
So here we have every single nut and bolt and pin that is used for the front suspension. As you can see, they look pretty clean, but they weren't like this. You know, being a car that had 180,000 miles, these were caked in oil, these were rusty, these were, you know, nasty bolts. So what we ended up doing is we ended up going to Harbor Freight, picked up a vibration tumbler, and here it is. We went ahead and put all the suspension components in here. We got this like walnut material, it's like a fine 24 grit material. And we let all of the bolts soak in there for about two hours. And uh, that was the result. All of the bolts came out really nice, you know, compared to how they looked before. And the only thing that we're gonna do now is go ahead and add a little bit of Rust-Oleum paint over the top of them, just to make sure that they don't get ugly again. So we got all the bolts painted gave them a couple coats of Rust-Oleum Professional High Performance Flat Black. So this is my go-to for when I want to spray paint stuff because this stuff will last forever and it protects against rust. It's something that you know that's nice to have and it also makes it look cool and you can't go wrong with the finish with this flat black. You can paint over an existing piece that you've already done and it'll look just as perfect it won't there won't be anything noticeable that you repainted so that's why I like messing with this and that's usually what I do when I want to make stuff disappear so before we can start putting in the suspension we need to go ahead and put in the subframe and here it is looking nice and clean inside a Lexus box so let's go ahead and put that on that we have the subframe on we can go ahead and start putting the suspension together and the first thing I'm going to go ahead and install are the upper control arms or the upper A arms because that's going to be one of the things that's going to be most difficult to do because once you have the strut in here it's going to be really hard to put these bolts in so right now that we have that extra space makes it a bit easier to do it by hand we'll get them as tight as possible but still leaving a little bit of play because you can't you can't tighten this this part of the suspension until your suspension is articulated the way it should be so i'm just gonna tighten it to where it kind of holds in place something like that but it still moves so that way we can have that adjustability before we actually tighten it down all the way so now the next step i'm going to put are the lower control arms I'm going to put the two bottom once this is the the main one that goes straight to the subframe and this one you can adjust the camber with so i'm going to set it to dead dead center and uh, put it all together and then the other arm that connects to this one will also be bolted on so we can tighten that up in a little bit so this one goes connected there and then bolts up to this piece right here. So I need to get three bolts. I need to get the bolt that goes here and the two bolts that go here. So I'm gonna put this bolt here for now just so it holds this arm in place. Don't want it to fall off. Then we can bring it all together over here and start tightening these bolts. So one of the things we need to do is put on the lower ball joints, which are these here. We got some brand new OEM lower ball joints because these are already pressed in to a brand new piece of metal and we don't have to worry about that. So it's cheaper and easier, I guess, going this route instead of having to worry about trying to press in a ball joint. And you can't go wrong with OEM. You don't, this is the one that you don't really want to fail because if this thing fails, guess what? Your car's getting damaged pretty badly.
Okay, so with this, now we can go ahead and set it on the lower control arm. And then we can hook it up with the upper control arm. But before we do that, I wanna go ahead and put the strut in. So to put the strut on, we have to put this little bottom bracket. It takes a 12 millimeter bolt here. And then here's where the end link goes to tighten that piece. So we're just gonna go ahead and tighten this down. Here is the end link. We went ahead and freshened them up, put that in there. And that's what's gonna be holding the bottom part of this bracket. And it's gonna be bolting onto our sway bar. For now, I'm gonna leave it loose because we still gotta figure out the orientation once we put the sway bar. Here we are with the suspension. This is probably gonna be the most exciting part for me to put on because it's the most gorgeous. This is the Bilstein Nürburgring Edition struts with the new Eibach Pro Kit springs and this thing just looks gorgeous you know it's not a coilover but this little aluminum like forged cnc piece whatever this is looks amazing so let's go ahead and put this on just so we can see it stand out in between all these flat black pieces right here so i went ahead and put on on the top i'm gonna put the nuts on top so that way we can not worry about the strut falling off and then we can adjust the bottom bolt looks like it's to the side a little bit there we go just went ahead and twisted it and then we're gonna put in this bottom bolt there we go that bolt is on and we're gonna get the nut for it and there it is look at that doesn't that just look amazing this looks great all this blackout right here you can't really pay attention to that and then you have this gem right here in the center just kind of like standing out in between the whole wheel well and then on top of that imagine having some nice brakes on here and this you weren't you're not going to be able to see this but this looks good this is like a straight little cnc piece for the new knuckle that we got when we put in the new bearings as well so this is looking great guys i'm this is probably what i'm most excited about how the suspension is coming out clean in a car this old so i'm going to go ahead and put the remaining castle nuts there's, there's one up here this is a 17 millimeter and look how nice it's going on there. After we went ahead and tumbled everything, everything's just fitting a lot nicer. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down. It's moving a little bit, so I'm gonna add a little bit of pressure at the top to make sure that it doesn't move. There we go, it's getting tight. Make sure it lines up with the hole. And we're gonna be using this OEM pin, this thing is actually the one that was on the car, but after we put it in the tumbler, it came out looking like brand new. So we decided to keep them. They actually look really, really nice. And that just clips on there to make sure that that nut isn't gonna come loose. Now we're gonna put the bottom castle nut, which is gonna be holding the lower ball joint. Oh, it's so nice when stuff is brand new. It just kind of like slides in. Now we're just gonna go ahead and get it tightened to the point that it needs to be. A little bit more. And there we go. We can see the hole. Put the pin through it. And there we go. And if you guys are wondering, yes, that is torqued to the correct specifications. So I put the sway bar on the end links just to make it a little bit easier on me when I go ahead to mount the actual sway bar. Put the new rubber grommets that kind of go with it. I'm gonna stick on the OEM brackets. They're kind of tight. And then we can go ahead and bolt it all down. the bolt on the other side before I tighten it. And there we have it. Sway bars on, just gotta tighten the end links and it will be 100% on. 
the end link was spinning, so it cheated a little bit. There we go. And that's how you do it the easy way. So we have most of the front suspension done. We got new ball joints. We got a new wheel bearings. We got a new sway bar. We got new bushings. We got new springs, newish struts. And uh, there's still, you know, little things to be done. So like the front, the upper control arms with the, with the new ball joints, that's gonna be replaced. But for now, that's gonna be a placeholder just so we can get the car uh, rolling for now. We're obviously gonna need to replace the end links, but for now, those are gonna work. And other than that, I mean, the suspension's looking amazing. It's just the way it looks in this clean state just makes you wonder uh, why don't we do this to all of our cars, right? So this is gonna be a project that's gonna be like no other project as you guys are seeing you know, from these first few videos. We wanna take that extra step, take that extra mile to make the car just look amazing, make you feel good. Especially when you're, you're driving this car, you know that everything is new, that everything is clean. And it just gives you a little bit more satisfaction with your build instead of just having a car that you just threw some wheels on you can actually be proud of all the work that you have put into it to make the car what it is now. So I'm excited for this project. I hope you guys are too. So you better subscribe and hit that like button so that we can keep pumping out videos on this car and we can get this car done, you know, with, with all the goals in mind. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You guys have a great day.